Hi, I'm Arthur. And it's come to my attention lately that GW is pulling some new power plays that are causing some waves in the 40k community. Ever since the list of firstborn marines being discontinued got dropped and the new list of primaris marines got released as well, I've seen a marked increase in people coming to my old primaris video and saying how wrong I was. Which I will say is not 100% off base, I did make some claims in that video that aren't really clear anymore. GW is releasing a lot of Primaris Marines to fill slots that old Firstborn Marines would be filling at a rather rapid pace. Even the Terminator suits of armor that they're releasing now got that Primaris sheen to them. So, what am I speaking about for those of you who are uninformed? Well, basically, ever since the dawn of 8th edition introduced a new kind of space marine known as a Primaris Marine, there have been a lot of doomsayers that proclaim GW is trying to weed out the old miniatures in a brute force way that is going to cause a lot of issues with the fans. It started in 8th edition when the Primaris Marines point for point were just a better choice than their firstborn counterparts, just on rules and stats alone. Things balanced out a bit more over time, but as it stands, it never truly went away, and now they are releasing Primaris Scouts, Primaris Assault Marines, and a bunch of heavy weapons that essentially operate as single loadout Devastator Marines. It's a bit of a weird feeling to see the Marines you have in your army slowly become obsolete or unplayable unless you're in Legends, and at worst not even be considered playable in any format. Unfortunately, I can kind of see the snow at the top of the mountain begin to billow, and it seems like this avalanche everyone was worried about is about to kind of happen. It might not go the way people think. A lot of people have been seeing the culling of 40k firstborn marines as a sign of the game going downhill, but really it's not. 40k is in a weird spot. I know this is going to sound like I'm sucking back grade A copium. I want to point out that 40k has been split into two games, not including Kill Team, of course. So let me elaborate on what I'm filibustering about. The majority of people who detest Firstborn Marines usually prefer the rule sets from pre-8th edition, as I mentioned. 8th edition is the time when Primaris Marines were introduced, and the rule set itself was like universally simplified. I'm just going to cut to the chase and say my theory is that GW is going to push those specific people into Warhammer the Horus Heresy, because I have played it and it seems pretty tight, as well as seeming like as a bit of a modified 7th edition. Sort of like D&D 3.5 to D&D 3, which I guess would make this 7.5 edition? though. It doesn't have access to the majority of the models that 40k has, you know, the Eldar, the Necron, the Orcs, and so on. It's definitely a bit more niche, only being Space Marines. But my theory is sound. I think they are going to divide the two groups of players, the ones who are okay with the Primaris Marines into the new game, which is 10th edition, and take the firstborn Marine players and try and push them into the Horus Heresy. Because they are doing a big push for the Horus Heresy, updating the models to be true scale with the new Mark III armors, or rather the ones that they did announce. Within a few months, they announced a whole release of a bunch of new Primaris replacements alongside those, so it's kind of strengthening the fact that they're trying to push people into the two camps to make people as happy as humanly possible. So you have Primaris Marines for the modern 10th edition, you have the Firstborn Marines for the second edition of the Horus Heresy. Now, there are a few good questions here. The main one is probably akin to, is this a good idea? The answer is like, Fucking no, it's definitely not. The second question is, what the fuck is GW doing? They're just spreading things out as far as humanly possible. There's an old expression, I forgot where it came from, but the man who tries to catch two rabbits will catch neither. So, they're trying to appeal to all people for all things, it's just not going to end up working out. It is a very clunky way of dealing with it, and I can promise you majority of the old heads who didn't like Primaris Marines don't give a single shit about the Horus Heresy as a setting. Personally, 
The best way they could have done it would have been to update the Tactical Marines box with true scale models like they did for the Mark VI Corvus pattern armor and what they're going to be doing with the Mark III pattern armor, and then make a bit of a legacy edition. Sort of to the tune of World of Warcraft, as it has its shitty version and its less shitty version in classic World of Warcraft. Mild support, a small dedicated team for FAQs and rules updates, and some models from time to time that could be used in all the games, including 10th edition. Permanently keep it with sort of a 6th edition rule set, I, I think it could be cute. A lot of people would be okay with using older models, though the issue therein is people can do that now. The level of coordination that you'd need to get multiple people to play past editions is a bit difficult. As someone who has been playing Warhammer Fantasy Battle, 8th edition with a few friends, trying to track down old army books that are not in print anymore is incredibly difficult at minimum and incredibly expensive at maximum. So it's not easy. So having a kind of legacy edition for Warhammer 40k classic, I guess you could call it, would be a bit easier to do and you just need to hire like a team of five or six dudes to like update the rule set and put out a PDF every couple months. But they're probably not going to do that. They seem to be quite committed with the path that they're taking. So with that being said, let me get to my opinion on the topic of the Firstborn Marines slowly being phased out. It's a bit nuanced where I can acknowledge the issue. I can really see what they're trying to do on both sides. With Primaris Marine Line being added to the already big Space Marine lineup, it gets a bit bloated, especially in comparison to the other Marines stuff that is getting added to the Horus Heresy. So it makes sense to clip the list a bit more here and there, so it's easier for new players to make a decision. Like, visually, if you knew nothing about a Space Marine and wanted to get into 40k, you looked up art for generic space marine and I showed you this image of a tactical marine and this image of a primaris intercessor would you be able to note any difference in functionality aside from maybe aesthetics no you wouldn't and that's kind of why I think it's important for them to make that distinction because they're just making marines for positions that old marines occupy so for new players trying to find out what they like marines that have overlapping purposes can be confusing so like you see with a hellblaster squad you can understand that that is a squad with heavy plasma shit seen in furnace squad that is flamers desolators and so on they all have a very apparent purpose with missile launchers flamethrowers plasma guns you know all that it's so that there is less thought needed to purchase because again, remove your information on Warhammer and tell me, aside from aesthetical differences, what is the difference between a biker and an outrider? other than the size. They look the same, they have the same purpose, but both are different in very minute ways. So it makes sense to call the one that is less visually impressive rather than updating the other one. Do I fully agree with it? No, not mostly even, because on the other side of things, I understand why people are mad. One of the selling factors for me to get into the game was a space marine from 20 years ago was still a space marine and could be used today, like now in this current edition. So to have that statement be retroactively revoked with the passage of time, I I feel spurned somehow. Though because I started in early 7th edition, I only got a taste of what the game was prior, and even then I was playing Tau because I'm bad at making decisions and don't like having fun, I guess. I never got a taste of what prior editions were like, because 8th edition was the game that rewrote most of the rules, and that was the edition that I played the most when I was first getting into the game. But I do understand the feeling of looking at the game changing for a lot of people. It feels like GW is bulldozing their childhood game, which I think is fair. I think at the end of the day, if you're mad at GW, you are 100% justified in doing so. Just as long as you don't try to ruin other people's fun. I have issues with GW finally crossing that line of removing Firstborn Marines, but for lack of a better way to put it, I can't stay mad about it. The world changes, the games you love are no longer going to be the same games, and they're no longer going to be marketed towards you. It's just the nature of the beast. If you look at someone who played D&D Advanced or like D&D 3.5, 
And you take that person who grew up with that game and try to get them to play with someone who pretty consistently D&D 5e, they're going to have different views on how the game is supposed to be played. But with 40k, the rule set gets updated, but the models don't. So you're having this kind of catch-up game happen. So there was no clean way for it to happen. Is it easy to deal with? No, it's not. I think it's particularly difficult to get past. I are people going to be mad forever? Yeah, probably. I know a guy, I know a few guys who are still mad about Warhammer Fantasy getting blown up, and judging from the comments, you are some of those guys. <laughs> but it's never going to be a clean cut. I think it is necessary because change is important. I am not going to be mad because I don't have a choice in the matter. It's either get mad at the game that I play, or just move on. I can only stay so mad at so many things and I have to reserve that anger for people who cut in front of me at fucking Taco Bell rather than, you know, the silly game that I've invested thousands of dollars into. So, yeah. I mean, most of my firstborn marines were gifts from people who lost them in divorces anyway, but like, you know, it is what it is. So what do you all think about Primaris marines, firstborn marines, that thing, the argument? Is it valid? Is it interesting? Are you one of the people who are upset? Or are you one of the people who genuinely just wants to play the game regardless of what it turns into? I want to see the conversation for this too. Let me know in the comments how you feel. Alongside that, remember to like and subscribe. Thank you to my channel members for not replacing me with Primaris Arthur by now. And if you want to see my videos early or even see exclusive content, then become a channel member today. Thanks again for watching and till next time.